Hey everybody, Ambassador Larry Huggins in Barcelona, Spain. I trust that you're having a wonderful day. You are tuned in to Z Train, which is uh, where I train you to win. So all aboard, I know where you're going and I know how to get you there in style. And this series is called Honey from the Rock, episode number 36. And uh, what we're doing in Honey from the Rock is we're going through the book of Ephesians verse by verse. It's been exciting. Today we are, um, we're up to the last verse of the third chapter, Ephesians 3.21. Now, back on last Thursday when we had our last uh, Honey from the Rock episode number 35, little recap, Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think. We talked about the superlatives of God and uh, not making any small, small plans and not being afraid to ask God for big things. Let's never underestimate the ability of God or the willingness of God to bless you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for everybody who's watching and listening. And I pray the Holy Spirit make this message real to them. And thank you for anointing me to be able to minister it accurately in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. All righty. Ephesians 3.21. And we're going to talk about uh, the church being a, a brilliant light in a dark world. And I'm calling this, uh, I'm calling this worlds without end. You'll see why in a minute. You can call it anything you want to. Uh, part one, Ephesians 3.21, and to him and to God be glory in the church, glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. By Christ Jesus. Another in him scripture. I always try to point out the in him scriptures. So there's glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Praise God. Uh, glory comes through Jesus. Praise God. And because he's the head of the church and we're in him, then there is glory in the church. Now, what is glory? Uh, in the Greek, it's the word doxa and it means a kingly Majesty, I like that. It means magnificence. That's a beautiful word. It means excellence, which also has to do with royalty. And it means dignity and grace. Praise God. But it's also more than that. It's a manifestation of the luminous presence of God. Amen. It's like the glory that came upon Mary. The, 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 the glory of the Most High overshadowed her. The word there is a pizkiazo, and it means to be covered with a cloud of luminous, glistening, supernatural or preternatural power. Amen. That's how Mary conceived Jesus and gave birth to him, being a virgin. It's because she received the word of God and then the glory of God enveloped her, penetrated, permeated, saturated, satiated, and gestated uh, that seed and produced the body in which the Lord Jesus Christ was incarnate. Amen. Hallelujah. A doxa. Praise God. Uh, I've experienced it many, many times. I've been in that cloud of glory, a shining, shimmering, glistening, uh, luminous cloud of God's glory. It's absolutely wonderful. They tell me, I've, I've read books about Azusa Street, I'm not that old, uh, that that glory cloud filled that building all the time, uh, morning, noon, and night. And there was a cloud above the building that shone into the night light. And sometimes there were lightnings going back and forth and up and down and miracles happening on the inside, miracles happening miles away. It's said that when people stepped off the train at Union Station in LA that the power of God would come on them and they would fall into the power and be healed. So uh, the glory of God is what God desires from the church and Azusa Street is proof that it does happen and it can happen and it should happen. We, we should have more experiences. The church should be a place where when people uh, start getting near it, they start getting happy. And when they get to, to the periphery of it, they start sensing and feeling the power of God. Back in Faith Christian Fellowship in the early days of our ministry, we had people get healed in the parking lot. And they would, they would line up early before the doors opened up to get in and get a seat and rush to the front row because we had that glory cloud experience in that church, and that's what God wants for all the churches. Uh, pastors need to learn how to accommodate the glory of God and, and how to create conditions in which the glory can manifest. Praise God, and worship is the key. <laughs> no doubt about it, on the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were, they were praising God in one mind and one accord. 
they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in other tongues, and there appeared unto them uh, cloven tongues of fire that rested on all of them. That word uh, tongues of fire is the Greek word pure, and it means lightning. <laughs> so it wasn't like a little candle wick or a candle flame. It was uh, the energy of God, the power of God. And we, we see a counterpart of that in the Old Testament, beautiful pictures of God's glory. And the word there is not doxa, but it's kabod. And kabod is a great word. Uh, it means glory, honor, splendor, copiousness. That means a fullness of blessings, abundance, riches, and weight. It means wealth. It means weight. It means gold. <laughs> it's, it's liquid gold. It's, it's uh, true riches. It's true wealth. And in the New Testament, it says, God shall supply all of your need or demands, request according to his riches in the glory by Christ Jesus. So again, um, the glory of God is, is a weight of substance and abundance and wealth, and it's where we can have our needs satisfied. That glory can be translated into whatever. I say it this way, your miracle is in the glory, your answer is in the glory, your blessing is in the glory, your revelation is in the glory, your life is in the glory. Praise God. So we need to get into the glory. When we're in the glory is when we get our needs met. So many people are asking God to send his power. Well, he already has. He wants us to worship him and step into his glory, and that's where we get our needs met. So the way you get your miracle is you worship God until the glory manifests, and then you step in that glory. Just uh, a few days ago, my wife and I were having our day, daily prayer and devotions. We pray all, for all of our family, friends, and partners twice every day. And we, we share Bible scriptures with one another and share what the Lord's showing to us and, and talk about the things of God. We, we take about an hour every morning and really have some in-depth conversations. And while we were worshiping God just last um, and talking about the things of God just last Thursday, there was a manifestation, a vis visual manifestation of God's glory in our house. Now we have a we have a, a dining room on one side and a living room on the other, and there's um, they're not they're not closed off from one another. They're open. There's a big opening there between the two, and we have a huge mirror on one side of the dining room and a huge mirror on the other side of the living room, so they're exactly parallel with one another. And it's a beautiful effect. It has that infinity effect. If you stand right there, you'll just see, you know, parallel universes opening up before you. It's really a, a mind-opening experience. We didn't plan it that way, but it, <laughs> we noticed it, and it really is significant. So I was sharing with uh, Sister Loretta. Actually, she was sharing with me, and while she was sharing, I looked over her shoulder. I saw something coming down uh, like rain, but slowly like a sheet of water, but it wasn't water. It wasn't as thick as oil. It was kind of like liquid gold in color, and it was shimmering and shining. I knew exactly what it was. I've seen it many times. I wait for these motorcycles to go by, and a few cars. There we go. And this glory was manifesting right there in our living room. So she and I got up and walked around and stood and then lifted our hands and started to worship God. And I am telling you what, you know, we sensed it. Uh, it was all over us. It was tangible. And, and what a vision, what a revelation, what an impartation we received. And it, it, it's so simple to manifest the glory of God if you'll just praise Him and magnify Him and worship Him and speak in tongues. And, and that's a hang-up for a lot of people, but it shouldn't be. It's biblical. It's scriptural. These signs shall follow them that believe. They'll speak in tongues. And Jesus said, you'll receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He's the one that commanded the believers to go to the upper room and tarry until they be endowed with power from on high. And uh, the church began with an explosion of glory of Holy Ghost glory that was visible and tangible. And that's why there were such tremendous miracles during that time and, and signs and wonders because there was a manifestation of the glory. Now, 2,000 years later, we've seen the glory of God appear in pockets here and there. It, it appears in my meetings and my miracle crusades. Praise God. I wouldn't have much of a ministry if it were not for the glory of God, uh, which... Uh, uh, I do my best to manifest that glory to create conditions where God can manifest the glory because that's where the miracles are and that's where they begin. Praise God. 
So uh, getting back to this, let me give you a couple of more scriptures about uh, the kabod. It also means weight. It means gold and wealth and riches, and it means weight. And it is heavy. It gets only sometimes heavy, like in 1 Kings uh, 8 and 11, the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the glory cloud. It was so heavy on them that they fell to the floor and they couldn't get up. I've had that happen more than once. Uh, you may have heard me tell about a service that I was conducting in Northern California and the glory cloud of God came into that that room actually out of the offering bucket. I was, I was lifting up this basket with our offerings in it, worshiping God with it, and a cloud filled the sanctuary and it was so bright I couldn't see the people. And I fell under the power. It's a weight, a substance. I fell and I was down there for three and a half hours. I thought it was five or 10 minutes, five minutes really. And I told my friend uh, Charlie, who had driven me to the meeting, I crawled up to the front row after a while and I sat there in a slump and I said, gosh, Charlie, I must have been, I must have been out for three or five minutes. He looked at his watch and said, would you believe three and a half hours? I said, you're kidding me. He said, no, three and a half hours. And I looked around, nobody had left, nobody had coughed, sneezed, shuffled their feet, no babies had cried, no one went to the bathroom. Uh, tear trails were tear tracks were on their faces and they were just they weren't on the floor like me but they were they were laid out on the pew just in the spirit three and a half hours and something wonderful happened uh, more than half that church became millionaires before the year was over with absolutely bonafide praise god so it is wealth praise the lord my god shall supply all your needs your demands according to his riches and the glory by christ jesus uh, we are we ought to be like obedidum and have the glory uh, with us, resident with us. You know, David put the ark for a while in Obadidam's farm and all of his sheep started producing, his cattle started producing, his olive trees, his vineyards. He became wealthy in just a few months because he had the, the glory that was associated with the ark of the covenant on his property. And it made him a rich person. And, and people, uh, there should be so much glory in the church that people get wealthy like they did in Macedonia, like they did in uh, Antioch. Praise God. Uh, people ought to just be in the presence of God should receive the power to get wealth. Everything their hand touches prospers. And the reason a lot of people don't prosper is they don't have a, they don't have that glory experience. You, you start with the glory experience and then the prosperity will follow. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, just a couple of more scriptures and then we're going to move on. Uh, uh, this thing about glory, it's, it's brilliant. It's the Pizkiazo of God. It's a, it's a brilliant preternatural cloud. Uh, you remember where, where the Apostle Paul told Agrippa that a light shined out of heaven that was brighter than the noonday sun and he fell to the earth? Glory in, in an extreme manifestation. Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John, a brilliant cloud overshadowed them. Moses on the on Mount Sinai, a, a brilliant cloud of fire covered the mountain. Uh, the tabernacle in the wilderness, the glory of God manifested uh, uh, in that cloud that led them through the desert. Uh, the dedication of Solomon's temple, the cloud filled the temple. Amen. And we need the cloud to fill our New Testament sanctuary as well. Praise the Lord. So that means that we have to uh, praise our way and worship our way into the Holy of Holies because the glory always manifests above the blood on the altar of God. I'll teach about that one day. It's, it's powerful. It always manifests above the blood. That's why I teach and preach a lot about the blood. Uh, Revelation 21, 23 talks about the new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven and eclipses the old uh, Jerusalem, you know, the world, Jerusalem in the world, this Jerusalem out of heaven came down. And it said, uh, there's no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God does lighten it. In other words, it's the atmosphere of heaven that's brilliant. Amen. Heaven is, is lit up with the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, you're the light of the world, and a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Praise God. Yeah, the world's getting darker, but there's a brilliant uh, manifestation of God's glory in the church. And as more and more churches uh, are experience the glory, that glory will begin to fill the earth. Now, right now, everybody's talking about gloom and doom and the end times and the end of the world and the Antichrist and 
plagues and, and wars and earthquakes and you know every time here we go every time those things happen somebody predicts it's the end of the world you know there have been thousands of predictions of the end of the world ever since the first century I mean it started uh, uh, as soon as the church started there were predictions of the end of the world I've already been through 17 of them <laughs> uh, th this next one is probably 18 I don't some people are putting dates on it. I don't know why they would, because the Bible says nobody knows the time, and it's going to happen at a time when you think not. So it's it's uh, silly to put a date on it. It's a way to it's a way to embarrass yourself and lose your credibility. We just need to be ready and live for Jesus. Live as though He's going to return momentarily, and plan as though He's not coming back for a hundred years or more. Praise God. So uh, we're going to move into the uh, last part of this verse twenty one. Uh, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. How many ages are there? Uh, unlimited, uh, in succession, one after another after another. Praise God, all ages. And that word ages is, uh, is, is, uh, means uh, generations or genealogy or lifetimes. Praise God. And then it says world without end, and that word uh, is eon. You recognize the word eon in the Greek, eons, ages, praise God. You know, there was a, there was a antediluvian age, then there was a patriarch age, and then there was the age of the law, and the age of the kings, and the age of the prophets, and, and uh, thank God we're in the New Testament age. And um, then we sometimes we talk about the millennial age, but listen, that's not the end. Even if, even when and if the, the heavens burn up with a fervent heat, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. So the church is going to continue forever, and you're part of the church, and you're immortal. That means you're going to continue forever and ever as well. So stop worrying about the end times. Don't be sad. Be glad. <laughs> You and I have immortality. We're going to live forever. It's just going to get better and better. It will get darker for the people in the world for a while, but it's going to get better for you and me. And you say, how's it going to get better? Well, stop focusing so much on the current events that you see on the Internet and TV and the political arena and start focusing on the Word of God, especially who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what you can do through your divine union with Christ. Don't look through the telescope backwards towards uh, the Old Testament time. That's gone. It's been fulfilled. It's redundant. We live in a new age. And you have to look forward. Praise God. And good things are ahead for you and me. So uh, glory in the church throughout all ages, throughout your lifetime and the lifetime of all of your success, uh, people who succeed you, world without end, ages without end, ages without end. I know people People like to talk about the end time. It's kind of entertaining. It's like going to a horror flick. You know, people pay money to go to some horror flick and scare themselves. I don't get it. I don't like horror flicks. I'm not afraid, but I just don't, I just don't like it. I like good things and wholesome and nice and, and that sort of thing. I like adventures, you know, shoot 'em ups and spy movies. But uh, uh, the horror stuff with demons and all that, no, no, no. There's nothing out in the world without me. Uh, putting a magnifying lens on it and paying money to do it. So I'm not entertained by uh, end time prophecies. I'm not entertained by these messages, importance of doom and gloom. I'm not entertained by people who get up and, and talk about how it's going to get worse and worse. No, no, no. It, it's, we, we go from glory to glory, glory to glory. We go from faith to faith, faith to faith. Amen. We're being changed by one degree of radiant holiness to the next, by the glory of God. You get in that glory, it'll make you younger, it'll renew your strength, it'll beautify you. The garment of salvation beautifies the meek. It'll quicken your mortal body. If the Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He was raised by the glory, dwell in you, it'll quicken your mortal body, it'll make you alive. Uh, the, the way to get your immune system built up is spend time in the glory. The way to get your, your mind uh, settle down and, and think and write is be in the glory of God. The way to improve your vision is be in the glory of God. The way to you know, improve your judgment is to be in the glory of God. Praise the Lord. The Z Church stands for uh, the glory of God. We want, we want desire and are doing our best to accommodate the glory of God. Praise the Lord. We are a church without borders. 
we're a church without walls. Uh, so many people see the church within a box of bricks and mortar or whatever, and they see that as a church. Maybe it has a steeple on top. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors. There's the people. You know, uh, that, that's really not what the church is. The church is the ecclesia of God. And that's a Greek term. It means the, the ruling body of citizens. It means uh, a manifestation of Greece. Uh, like a colony. So everywhere Alexander the Great went, he established Greek culture, Greek laws, Greek economics. Uh, everything was Greek. Greek language, that's why we speak Koine Greek. New Testament Greek is Koine Greek. The Bible was written in Koine Greek because of Alexander the Great. And in uh, Jesus' day, all over the Roman Empire, they, they spoke Greek. They spoke more Greek, more Greek than they did Latin. They spoke Greek. Spoke more Greek than they did Aramaic, uh, what's the word, Aramaic. They spoke more Greek than they did Hebrew. Everybody spoke Greek. <laughs> and uh, why? Because the Greeks put their culture wherever they went. Well, heaven has brought its culture to the earth, and, and that colony of heaven is called the church, the ecclesia of God. And it's not the church unless it's filled with glory. It's just an assembly of people. It does not become the real manifestation and representation of heaven until the glory of heaven comes down on the earth. And when the glory of God comes on the earth, then you're having church. In Texas, we say, we say, I'm fixing to get ready to go to town. I'm fixing to get ready. It's a little colloquialism that you'll hear it in the South, especially in Texas. What are you doing? Well, I'm fixing to go to town. Did you know that that doesn't mean someone's actually going to town? It means they're contemplating the possibility of going to town, maybe. You know, they're just always approaching this, this decision or this idea. Uh, uh, now, not getting there as fast as you as you may think they should or would. And so a lot of people are trying to have church, fixing to have church, making a stab at it, you know, going about it uh, their own way. But uh, the simple thing is that we're not having church the way church ought to be until we have that Pentecostal experience with the manifesting glory of God. Amen. <laughs> well, visit Z Church to find out what I'm talking about. Zchurch.life, 10 o'clock a.m. every Saturday morning. And uh, I'll send you an invitation if you send me an email, Pastor Larry at zchurch.life. Praise the Lord. I want to thank all my friends and partners for um, your support for this ministry. Thank you so much. And uh, I want to remind everybody, uh, Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in the glory. You get in the glory and your prayers will get answered right now. Amen. All right, I'm going to say adios de Barcelona, España, y nos vemos mañana, misma hora.